Okay, you ready? Welcome back to another video guys. Today we have a Pinarello F12 in rim brakes. Uh, you guys always say these brakes are heavy and they are all gravel bikes so we have a rim brake here today. Uh, Jasper, thanks man for coming out and letting me film your bike again. Uh, thanks for messaging me. I'll, I'll let you run through your awesome bike. Hi guys, so thanks for you know having this session you know for to do the contact the interview. So with me here I'm riding a Pinarello Dogma F12 rim brake edition. Well, uh, I got this bike in actually October last year 2020. Uh, the expected delivery date initially was January. They told me January 2021, but however, uh, the bike got delayed and actually I received the bike in May, uh, in early May this year 2021. Well, it was about a good seven to eight months of wait. You know, I was a bit worried, but at the end of the day, I think it's worth the wait. Well, it's a very beautiful bike, as you can see. The color of the frame is uh, Astro White. It's a factory color option. Uh, so it's a mixture of a matte as well as a gloss finish. Well, I think it's a very nice frame. Well, the frame size is a 51 and a half. So as, as a reference, I am 173. And I think that you know the height, the frame wise, the size is good uh, in a way where uh, I feel very comfortable you know, riding when it comes to long journeys, etc. And with the bike, I fitted with the One Piece Integrated Mose Talon Handlebar. Uh, it is a 1k carbon as well as you know dimensions are the 42 by 110 well it is a very good size you know i don't feel it's very overstretched it's a very comfortable you know it's just nice for me i fitted the saddle which is a physic aerion r3 so it is a carbon saddle where the rails the rails are aluminium uh, i didn't get opted for the r1 because i was worried about the carbon rails so i think r3 is a very comfortable saddle for long distance journey Group set wise, I opted for the you know the Shram Red E Tap 11 speed group set. Uh, it's a very good group set where it's quite it's, a, it's quite responsive. Although yes, it's, some may argue that it's not as responsive as the DRS the uh, DI2. Well, I think it's one thing I love about this group set is about the exchange the changeable battery where the batteries can be interchanged you know very easily very conveniently and it's very easy to charge. Uh, so the only difference that is of this group set is that I didn't opt for the SRAM direct mount group the brakes. I opted for the DRAs, the direct mount brakes because you know they are more they are able to do brake it's more be the better braking uh, they have better braking and yeah so I prefer the DRAs brakes. Uh, moving on so for the group set I opted for the OSPW the SRAM speed OSPW where because you know it's, it's nice uh, <laughs> for me I, I quite like like you know add a bit of touch you know a bit of color to the bike moving on to the wheels you know I opted for the zip NSW 404s uh, these are very good rims I find it's a very 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 nice very comfortable you know especially if I'm like riding at West Coast Highway or TMCR especially you know when I'm above 35 kilometers per hour well the bike actually you know moves very smoothly you know you feel like you're coasting and it's a very fast pair of wheels yes although zips you know they may not be they may not be a light pair of rims but however I feel that yeah it's a very overall it's a, I'm very satisfied with the performance of the rims for the carbon bottle cages is the from Supercast you know they actually match the color of the, the frame yeah, it's a very nice, you know, it's for going with a black and white team as well as the, you know, the, the Cyclovation bar tape, the black and white, the Fusion series. Well, actually this color, color wave is actually a 2021 factory color option. So actually it just launched uh, early, like end of, about end of November, December period. So yeah, it's a 2021 color factory option. It's very rare to see nowadays people buying a rim brake. Can you tell us more about your decision to buy a rim brake and in terms of braking performance, uh, how is it so far? Actually, before you know, when I was ordering this bike, actually I was in a dilemma whether I wanted to opt for disc brake or rim brake. So I had mixed opinions from friends, you know, from online reviews that you know some say these are better, you know, whereas some say you know they still prefer the rim. Well, the reason why I opted for the rim is because of a few reasons. So firstly, because you know I have a second bike at home, which is a disc brake. So there's, I wanted to try like one rim, one disc. So at least there's a variety of options. Secondly, also because this group set was belongs you know to my previous bike, it's a Pinarello F10. So I just swapped over the group set where I just bought the frame only from online. And also because I still prefer the rim brake. You know, at the end of the day, because maintenance-wise is easier compared to disc brakes. You know, because based on my second bike, you know, the maintenance-wise is uh, really a pain. And rim brakes is very easy to maintain. There's 
little maintenance like it's very easy lah. you know when it comes to servicing there's not, not much of a headache so that's why i opted for the rim brake when it comes to climbs is you know definitely is better because you know it's lighter you save the weight from you know based on the rotors the disc etc and i think but however you know when you ride the bike in the rainy days you know braking has is a, it's an issue lah, because you know when when you know when the water touches the brake track i think yeah you lose your braking i think i want to talk uh at, at my personal opinion because i my bench is in a disc brake and now i'm starting to regret my decision of buying a rim uh, a disc brake because like what you've mentioned maintenance wise it's a pain in the ass because it's you need to uh, bleed it hydro uh, hydraulically and if you were to take out the the bearings of your headset you know everything becomes so messy uh and personally for my other bike or my upcoming bike that i want to get i want to get a rim brake but it's very hard to find bikes now with rim brakes of uh, options right i think piran arello is one of them uh not sure maybe some smaller manufacturers like time uh, and I don't think Specialized even offers rim brakes now. And so moving on from rim brakes, uh, the discussion on rim brakes, uh, to your Ceramic Speed OSPW, do you think it makes any difference? I know it's a controversial topic. Uh, what, what's your opinion on uh, OSPW? Well, I think, you know, based on online reviews, you know, many people say, you know, uh, OSPW is safe power, you know, especially in climbs, etc. But for me, actually, you know, based on a user, you know, who actually uses, you know, this based on, you know, the past few months, actually, I... For me, I feel that this whoever is looking to upgrade as an OSPW, I think this shouldn't be your main primary. You know, it's something that is like you shouldn't be like if you are looking to upgrade something for your bike. This shouldn't be your primary concern. I think you know this is something that you know it's like something that is you want to add aesthetics to the bike. You know, you want it to make look nicer. Yeah. So I think you know upgrade wise, you know it doesn't really to me it doesn't really help. Like, I might be wrong. You know, others may. Have, <laughs> I disagree lah, but yeah to me i don't really see a difference so the front light i'm using the exposure front lights you know i bought it from one by asia so and the real lights i'm using actually is they call it the cyclic lights yeah real light so it's an integrated brake braking system yeah it's a korean brand so how does it work so actually it's a bit it detects based on your motion sense like emotion lah. so let's say when you you know the light will be flashing and when it comes to like when you start to brake, you know, the, the light will sense that you are slowing down and it actually goes into the brake mode. Yeah, brake light. Pinarello, this brand, you know, used to be, you know, my one of my dream, it's one of my dream bikes. Lah. So, initially, you know, when I started road cycling, I was, I started off, you know, as a, with a Cannondale Cat 10. You know, as I, you know, on the road, you know, when I see people ride the Dogma, especially, you know, I feel, wow, you know, I really <laughs> love the shape of the bike. I feel it's a very beautiful, it's a piece of art, lah, you know, when, at Pinarello, you know, people always say, uh, so I got the chance, you know, after my next upgrade was uh, actually a Dogma Thing 2. Well, uh, a Thing 2 actually, you know, when I was, I got the Thing 2, I was, I was very happy, you know, it's a very nice, nice color, you know, so my way color, one of one. And, you know, I see, you know, I feel very contented owning this Thing 2. And so after this Thing 2, you know, I had this opportunity to upgrade to an F10. So F10 wise, you know, it's a very aggressive <laughs> compared to the Thing 2. It's a very different game. And... You know, I feel very, it's a very nice bike, you know, ultimately, I think I'll stay with the Pinarello brand. We'll move on to Instagram Q&A. You guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and you can ask your questions. Did you genuinely buy Pinarello for the brand and history that it stands for? Or is it because of the hype? Okay, I think generally I, I bought the, the the bike, yeah, based on partly yeah the history and you know the 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 brand itself, because you know my favorite, you know, like what I said, uh, mentioned earlier, um, I actually my, my dream bike was actually a Pinarello, so I did not op I did not buy because you know it's whoa, a lot of people you know it's a hype thing you know or whatever, but because it's based on generally you know I really love this brand a lot, you know it's my one of my dream bikes, so yeah I got a Pinarello, that's the reason. What do you think of the curves on the fork? Uh, before I pass it on to you, maybe I want to top up on that question. It, when I first saw the Pinarello, right, I really hated the design of the fork because it was just way too curvy. I really hated it, but uh, I think in my previous video, I did say that Pinarello has been one of the top bike brands or, you know, the frames are top notch. Most people who say they buy a Pinarello, they never change their bikes and, you know, it's one of the bikes that they will own forever. Well, I think regarding the fork wise, you know, because, you know, previously I owned the F10. So F10's fork, you know, was more straight wise, whereas for the F12, it's more <laughs> curvy, more jagged. But actually for me, I personally, actually I quite like, I quite like this fork design. I think it's quite a unique, you know, among all the bike brands. You know, it's quite a special fork. Yeah, there's a lot of con controversial, you know, opinions, mixed opinions about this, the, the design of the fork. Well, actually performance-wise, you know, Pinarello claims that, you know, it, it's, 
is better, you know, makes the bike go faster. But for me, actually, yeah, I think it makes the bike more sharp looking. Actually, I think the most coolest part of the bike is the top tube where it's slightly uh, bent upwards. And also the, actually the rear seat stays, it's, it's uh, you know, kinked more to the left. It's, it's very weird design. Um, you own the F10 and then now you own the F12, right? Do you think there's a significant difference in terms of performance? Okay, performance wise, right? Yes, there's definitely a significant difference. So the difference is like, you know, when I went, when I ride this bike, when I go to like West Coast Highway or TMCR, I think it's very easy for me to actually hold speed like at like 40 kilometers per hour, 45 kilometers per hour, because it's very, it's, it's a very easy bike. It's a very easy going bike, I feel. Like I think Venerola has done a very good job in, in a way. They've really improved the technology from the previous F10 outgoing model to the F12. So I think, yeah, it's, yeah when it comes to, you know, the performance-wise, yeah, it's, I can feel a very, a very huge difference. Have you ever ridden a faster, snappier, more responsive bike? No, to be honest. Actually, this is my, you know, the most responsive bike that I've ever ridden. The bike speed up speeds very easily. And yeah, and you know, Venera is quite a stiff frame, but not, okay, not as stiff as the F8, but yeah. Have you tried DI2? If so, do you prefer DI2 or ETAP? Yeah, actually I did I did try DI2 before. So actually my my SR6 that I have, yeah, it's a DI2, it's a Dura East DI2. Well, actually, there are some pros and cons to both group sets, lah, but because actually the DI2 wise, you know, the shifting is actually more accurate compared to the SRAM, you know, because of the ETAP system is a wireless system compared to DI2 where it actually still runs cable. Uh, yeah, so actually this ETAP system, actually there will be some <laughs> delays when it comes to shifting because it's a wireless system. So it needs some time, not, not as fast as compared to the DI2 where it's a, you know, in, instant. For me, actually, I still have a soft spot for the ETAP. I still prefer the ETAP. Because like what I said, you know, actually, the it's very convenient, you know, when it comes to charging-wise, you know, the maintenance, like when I do servicing, you know, it's very easy for the mechanic, you know, they can just take out the, you know, front D, rear D. How much is the group set? But actually, because this group set, you know, previously came on my my F10, so I, I couldn't really remember because I bought my F10 in 2018. So, uh, well, actually, I think if I'm not wrong, the group set now currently in carousel market, you can actually fetch secondhand about maybe between 2005 to 2008, you know, between around that price range. Does the F12 ever feel heavy and cumbersome under power? versus other lighter aero bikes? I think at Pinarello is known to be quite a heavy bike. La. For me, uh, for me, weight-wise, I don't see any issue. La. Underpower-wise, no. It definitely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's underpower. I think it's the power is good, you know, when I, especially, you know, when I try to accelerate, apply the power when I ride. You know, it's very responsive and yeah, you know, it picks up, the speed picks up very, very quickly. La. Why Why do some people say that Pinarello is soft compared to compared to a track bike? Well, actually, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, I, I do have the Madon at home as well as the F12. Well, actually, in my opinion, actually, I do feel actually the, the Madon actually is softer compared to the, the Pinarello. You know, Pinarello is more stiff. You know, it's more, like, it's a more responsive bike. Therefore, you know, I feel it's, it's more, in a way, it's, more, it's stiffer compared to the Madon. Whereas, for, like, compared to the Madon, actually, a Madon is it's a bit softer because, you know, with the ISO speed technology as well as, you know, it's a very comfortable bike. So, you know, it's very good for long distance. Jasper, thanks for coming out, man. Okay, thanks for today. Thank you. Uh, that's it. I think we're done. Uh, Jasper, thanks for coming out, man. Uh. This is a funny question. It's not a question, but he says, I will, I will reenact it for you. <laughs> he says, does this force you to make the Italian sign? <laughs> this in Italian, you know what this means? This is what the fuck in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Italian sign. Why this question answer? 7.5 kilometers. Yeah. 